Hey, all you awesome disciple makers. Remember, we're all about discipling one another to reach and raise the next generation to live out God's truth. That's right. Live out God's truth. I hope you're telling that to your class. And, and that's what our mission is. Now, as Blackshear Place, we have some very clear values. Those things that anybody comes in to Blackshear Place, they're going to see they're valuable to us. You know what they are, but we're going to show them to you. Our values are the power of God's Word. We believe in the power of God's Word, the joy of of authentic community, the expectation of ministry excellence, the blessing of generous living, and the priority of reaching people. All these are so important, but today we want to highlight the joy of authentic community. So we're talking about uh, sermon-based small groups and how those are going to change things a little bit. Let me ask you this question. Let's just set up a hypothetical scenario. It is uh, 2 in the morning, and you have a kid that is really, really sick, and you have other kids that somebody's got to come watch so you can take this kid to the doctor and your husband or your wife is out of town on a business trip. Who do you call? If you go to Blackshear Place and you're not in small group, do you call Pastor Jeff? I don't think I'd call Pastor Jeff. Um, do you call Rob Britton? Nobody's going to call Rob. <laughs> but listen, if you're in a Bible fellowship class, if you have the joy of authentic community, you're probably going to call somebody in that class that you know really well, aren't you? You see, because the joy of authentic community, our groups, our Bible fellowship ministry, that's what separates the big group and the small group. Pastor Jeff preaches the Bible so well, and he emphasizes the power of God's Word. But if we don't if we don't get the joy of authentic community, if we don't get connected to one another, then, then we're not doing what God's called us to do. So I want to talk to you just a minute about how would a sermon-based small group change what you currently do. Now, last week I walked through what a sermon-based small group was. You can go back and watch that video. I'll put it in a link. And uh, But this week I want to ask, you know, what would it change? How, do, how, does, how does it change what you currently do? Well, here's a couple things you need to know. One, you lose no element of what you currently do. So if you're thinking, man, they're just going to want to change everything and do everything different and new. No, 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 no. That's not what we want. You're not going to lose anything. Now, we are going to ask you to emphasize some things a little differently than maybe we have in the past. So let me show you just some of the elements of a sermon-based small group. First of all, refreshments. Hey, we're Baptists. You know that. We like to eat. Amen. It's always good to have a little bit of food. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, sharing. What's happening in your life and just taking some time for some prayer requests. You know, just small talk. And it's really good to have some kind of icebreaker in that. You know, ask a question. I always ask a crazy question like, what's your favorite movie? Or if you were an animal, what would you be? Or if you didn't have to sleep, what would you do with the eight hours extra you have every day? Questions like that that just get people talking, give people a chance to talk. Those actually really build your community. And then the bulk is always the bulk. It's study and discussion. But this study and discussion is from the previous week's sermon. So here's the big thing we want you to think about. So often our small group has basically been a microcosm of the large group. In other words, you teach and lecture for 40 minutes and people take notes. We don't want you to do that. We want you to allow people to discuss what they've been studying. And we want you to lead the discussion and take the word that has been taught and take it to another level. So what does that look like? Well, it's about 45 minutes time. Um, we're going to send out study and discussion questions from the week before. So we really want your people to be interacting with this throughout the week. They're thinking about what pastors preach about and they're interacting with it in their own life. Here's three kinds of questions we're going to have every week. Getting to know you so we'll get to know each other better. Into the Bible, what does the text say, and, and how do we interact with what the Bible says? And then application, this is a big thing. of How do we take the message that Pastor Jeff preached, and in our small group, in our lives, put it in shoe leather? What do we do? And then the big element that we really want to make sure we get, this is huge, is prayer. Now, we talk about prayer a lot. We pray very little. When I'm saying prayer, we're saying you need to leave 15 minutes every week for your group to pray. And this isn't, all right, everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. We got the prayer list. Let's read over the prayer list. This is you getting in groups with people in your class, getting heart to heart, getting arm to arm, and praying with one another. And I like for our class every week, we kind of like to switch it up. So one week pray with one group, one week pray with another group, and you build that joy of authentic community through prayer. So listen, this joy of authentic community is huge. How's it going to change from a sermon-based small group from what we do now? Well, we want more interaction with the people and with the Word of God. So, hey, we love you guys. Remember, we're discipling one another to reach and raise the next generation to live out God's truth.